Hey everybody, Liam Clisham here for part three of our Redshift material series. This time I'm gonna to talk to you about the car shader or car paint shader inside Redshift. Break it down, it's a pretty awesome Uber shader. And then I'm gonna show you a customized uh, car paint shader that Billy Chicken has shared with me too, just so you can see the awesome detail that you can bring out in a car with just a few nodes. All right guys, let's hop in. All right, so once again, we're back inside Cinema 40 and we're gonna take a look at this awesome Uber shader for the car paint. So what I've got here is a model from Turbo Squid of a Ferrari. And I've gone and cleaned it up a little bit, but I'm mostly just gonna focus on the body paint. Um, no other details, kind of like the taxi tutorial that I did a few weeks back. Um, but this is just gonna be to show you how the paint really works on the body. And then um, if you have your own car model or things like that, then you can go in and start applying everything you've learned in these lessons to that. And you can see I haven't really done a great job cleaning up. There's still some poly issues back here and a little bit in here, but it looks good enough for this example. So if I hit play, you'll see my layout's a little bit different just so you can get, you guys can really see the correspondence between the two. Um, I've got progressive rendering on and I'm just gonna let it render and it's kind of this flat color and that's because in the car paint shader, I've turned off everything else so you can really see how things react when I bring them on. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just dock this over here because we're not gonna really be changing objects very much. We're just gonna focus on the paint and I'll close this tab to give ourselves some more room. So just like everything else, there's basic and then it gets broken into these other tabs. So base layer diffuse, base layer specular, metallic flakes, clear coat, reflection, and advanced. Base layer diffuse is where you're gonna control the base layer of everything, this matte coating, if you would, will. So for pigment, let's go ahead and make this like a Ferrari red. So we've got that real quick update. And then for edge fall off, what edge fall off is, is how the darker areas and the light fall offs are going to wrap around the edges and uh, how how it merges between two different colors. So right in here, if you were to look really closely, it's got like this purple hue to it. What we want to do is match it more to like a red and we'll update that. And then this curve factor uh, is kind of a slider between the two. So we pull this back in, we'll get more dark reds in there. If we go back up, we'll get less. So five is right in between, kind of like the darkness of it. So maybe like 3.5. Let's try that. That's looking pretty good. Still looking pretty flat though, and a little bit washed out. So let's go ahead and take a look at our specular. So our specular is just like everything else that we've covered in the base material and even in skin and subsurface scattering. Um, I'm not gonna go over all these details, but if you wanna choose a color, do this. Um, this red's pretty good, maybe a little bit more value there. Uh, it's getting a little pink. How about we just go up into like closer white. And as I bring this weight in, you'll start to see specular added into it. And for the main note of this is that glossiness um, for paint isn't like you would think of reflections for metal. So most paint has a low glossiness and as you get higher and higher, it's gonna look less and less realistic. So if I bring this up, you'll start to see it gets like this super shine on it. And we don't really wanna do that. We can actually control that shine a lot better in the clear coat. Um, so just like an actual car, cars have many layers to their paint. So like a base layer and then um, a little bit of a shine layer or specular layer, then they might throw in some metallic flakes. And then on top to seal it all off, they'll throw on like a clear coat that gives it this nice shine. So this glossiness here isn't gonna work once we start throwing on the clear coat. So maybe about like 0.35 again for this. And maybe we can see what it looks like with just the highlights only. So where like strong specular hits are and highlights. I'm liking that, that's looking pretty good. Then down here, just like I talked about Fresnel in the first material video, same kind of controls. Um, the only difference is, is there's facing and perpendicular uh, reflectivity. 
And what that means is you probably can figure it out is facing means if it's facing towards the camera and at like a zero degree angle, um, that's going to be stronger. And then perpendicular is 90 degrees or 90 degrees plus. Uh, so anything that is facing away at a right angle or higher uh, is going to be controlled by this. So if I start bringing up this facing reflectivity, you're going to notice this starts to get really kind of blown out by this glossiness. But if I slide it back down and bring this back up, we start to get a little bit more realism to it. So these highlights over in here are going to come out a little bit more. This is going to stay um, a little bit flatter the way it should when we're looking on to it. But of course, like everything else that we've talked about, because it's biased, you can control everything that you want as you wish. So this curve factor here is the same as the curve factor we saw before. We can slide in between facing and perpendicular. So bring that back down. We're starting to get some more facing in there. If we bring it back up, we'll start to get more perpendicular in this area. And, you know, I think 0.65 is probably going to be good. Whoop, sorry. I had to say 6.5. There we go. And we'll leave it at that. One of my favorite things about the car shader is being able to add in metallic flakes. So I'm going to hop back in here and I'm going to go into a tight shot right there. And if you look, it's kind of got a little bit of texturing to it, but not really. As I start to bring in these flakes, let's start all the way at one. You're going to notice we get some real metallic paint chip look in here. So if you own a car, you've probably seen this and they're usually really small. These are pretty large. Um, I'm going to turn them down in a second. This is mostly just so you can see. Uh, this starts to get a really nice realistic car feel. And so I think 0.125 is probably going to be a better scale. Now it feels a bit more realistic. The density is probably a bit high, maybe 0.35. What well, the density is is how tightly packed these are in groups. You can change their variation, so how much they scatter around. And you'll notice all these controls are the exact same as your base layer. So once you understand this, you can understand this. And pretty much if you've watched the first couple videos, you're probably understanding this a lot by now anyway. So we're kind of just talking about the nitpicky details inside each of these shaders at this point. So I, I like this. It might be a little less than I wanted, maybe 0.25. That's starting to look better. Decay distance is uh, the distance away from the vehicle that the chips start to not render. So right now I have it at 10,000. So if I'm pulled back, I can still see it. Let me switch into the other camera. And you can see that you can still see these paint chips in there. But if I bring it down to say mm, a thousand, we're going to start to lose these details. You can see them just a little bit. They're barely still in there. And then if we go down to even say a hundred, it's only just a couple that start to stay in there. They really start to disappear. So if I go up to say 50,000, we're pretty much going to see all of them there's not gonna be very much decay to them. Even back in here, we can start to see some of the uh, paint chips coming through, or metallic flakes coming through. And just so we can see them a little bit better at this distance, how about 0.4? Give them a little bit more size. Now you can really see them. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back down to 0 0.25. Just leave it at that. And let's top this thing off with our clear coat. Still looking a little bit flat. We've got some shine in there, especially in these areas here. But for adjusting specular, you would expect there to probably be some real specular shine. And that's really going to come in as soon as we slide this up. So as soon as we bring that in, now we're starting to really get these specular hits. The glossiness is probably a bit too high, especially in this area here where we're getting kind of a flat, whiter washout. Um, I'm going to bring this down to maybe like... 0 0.48, 0 0.5. Uh, but now we start to lose that sharpness. So if I come back in here, maybe I can dial this in. Yep. So now we're getting a nice base layer of specular coming through. It's not getting this white washout, but we're still getting some really nice hot highlights here. This bending of the light around these curves is looking really good. 
probably bring this in a little bit, bring this down just a tad. So the more we adjust our glossiness down, you can see the highlights start to spread out. The glossiness increase is gonna make them sharper. Maybe if I bring this up to say 64, clean it up a little bit. And we can probably bring the facing up just a tad and bring the perpendicular down just a little bit, even it out, just the curve just a little more. And I think I want this edge fall off to kind of have a little bit more impact in there. There we go. This red's probably a little too hot too. Darken that up. Probably even bring our base specular layer down some. And maybe even our clear coat can come down just a little bit so we can still get that nice glossiness going in here, but adjust the weight so it's not combating and washing out these areas here. And then under advanced is just like every other video so far is uh, making it render faster and have uh, thresholds and things like that. Um, again, I'm not going to talk about that in this video of how to increase your render speeds and times that's more for AOV and like a render settings overall video. Um, again, this is just how to get in here and really mess around with uh, car paint and start to make a car look good. And uh, I'm actually going to open up another scene from Billy and <laughs> nice screenshots of me right there. So if we open up this one that Billy Chicken sent me, if you don't know who Billy is, he's a motion designer, Cinema 4D artist that does a lot of modeling with cars and texturing of cars. Um, he sent me his car paint shader and it's like a super duper over the top shader. And if you just look at this simple scene, it's the exact same one, um, except it's just on a white floor instead of a studio setting. Um, it just looks so much better. And that's because of what you can do in the graph editor. So let's pull on back with this. And it looks complex, but it's not. It's If you break it down, it, it's actually pretty easy to get through. But I'm showing you this for anyone that is thinking, wow, that you, you are kind of limited by what Redshift can do. That's only because we're looking at the base shaders and how to get started with them. If you start to go into the node graph and start playing with these things, and I promise I'm going to do an update with more advanced settings and getting inside the node graph, you can really get complex controls. So right here is uh, a paint shader. And then this is a blender. Yeah, come on. There we go. And then another base material, so like a normal redshift material. And it's all added in together and blended together. There's some IOR in here. There's some more Fresnel stuff back in here. So Billy's gone in and really customized this to his liking, to how he likes to work with cars. Like I said, he works with cars all the time. So he really knows what he needs out of a shader. So he's taken what Redshift has and built upon that to make something even more complex. Um, so definitely go find Billy um, and follow him. And if you ever need help with car paint or car modeling, ask him questions. He's been an awesome resource for me. All right, guys. So I got to thank you again. I know it's a lot of stuff to cover. I didn't even get through all the shaders. Um, it's mostly because a lot of them are kind of being put to the wayside. So the architectural shader is eventually going to be phased out. The um, subsurface shaders being phased out because now you can do most of that in just this Uber material shader. And uh, volumes is just a topic of their own. Incandescent, I talked about that a little bit in the lighting tutorials. But if you want me to go over it again further, leave a comment or send me a tweet at underscore 531 on Twitter, or again, email brograph at brograph.com and they'll forward me the questions too. So this coming Thursday, it's usually been at eight o'clock central time. I have a little bit of personal stuff going on, so I need to push it back 
about a half hour to an hour. So if you've been coming to the live shows with questions and things like that this Thursday, be prepared for it to start closer to about 8.30 Central Time, 9 o'clock Central Time, um, and we'll get rolling just like we normally do and start throwing questions at me. We'll have fun. I'm definitely not going to go as in-depth with this. This is kind of going to be more of a Q&A, whatever questions you have, throw them at me and we'll start tackling them because I it would take me too long to get through all the shaders again in just a Q&A session of uh, Twitch or YouTube. All right, guys, thank you so much again. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to follow along and see what new tutorials are coming out. I have a list on my site. If you go to 5five31.com, uh, you can see a calendar of what tutorials are coming out, when my AOV tutorial is going to come out, uh, when my render settings tutorial is going to come out, things like that. And also follow Brograph because they're the ones hosting these live events and we're double posting these between their page and my page. And uh, we talk about it on the podcast too. And we're doing follow-ups there. So definitely follow here on my page, follow on Brograph's page, and let's really have some fun learning Redshift together. All right, thanks so much. I'll talk to you soon.